Okay. In, again, the things you wrote in the forums, the Minnesota Nice, and the reading responses, one of the threads was wanting students to be more aware of why and how they were learning, of not being sure how to coach students to be stronger learners, and recognizing that you have a range of students in your classes. And again, that's part of uh, the uh, lovely work of inclusion is to figure out how to help several different clusters of students learn in your class and know that they come with different skills and that they probably haven't really been um, engaged with others before you or while they're in your class about understanding what learning really is and making that leap from high school learning to college learning or from general ed learning to disciplinary learning and to becoming independent and self-regulated learners, making choices themselves. So in thinking about things for this particular segment, we wanted you to have a selection of readings. I'm going to refer over here to see what those are. Um, to have a selection of readings where you could think about homework from a principle that Stephen Chu calls an orienting task, which you can also do as part of an in-class activity. Um, help students in class move from one concept you're doing into a practice to have them apply things, to reorient them to the material they've studied, they've just heard in a problem. So we start out with a video from Stephen Chu on Oriented that addresses orienting tasks, and then <clears throat> provide uh, two sets of uh, resources, really. One article by Linda Nilsson that reframes CATS, classroom um, assessment techniques, they're often called, but they're also called now increasingly classroom activity techniques, things you can use as part of homework or as part of in-class work in order to structure the learning. And one of the things that the research by Sarah Eddy and Becky Hogan points out is that when students have structures that prepare them for class, they do pre some pre pre preparatory work and then they do some structured based learning. They have something in it to take a pause, to apply things, and some follow up where they summarize that they do much better in the short term and especially in the long term. And especially that impacts non traditional or um, increasingly traditional students in our classes, whether it's non tradition in terms of race, ethnicity, first generation, um, sexuality, the kinds of things we've come to identify as valuable to our teaching and learning. So, Linda Nilsson reassesses some of that, puts them in a context. And then we've selected three readings that focus on metacognition, the um, acts of learning to learn, where students um, plan for learning, monitor learning, and evaluate their learning. And each of the three authors we've selected do a really great job of showing us ways to incorporate metacognition in the work our students already do and in that way help achieve what Stephen Chu sets out as an orienting task and a chance to get students to really dig in and be more self-directed learners. One reading that you'll find is written by Barbara Millis and it really uh, frames things around uh, what you can do before, during, and after a class with exams included in there. Um, there's one by Kimberly Tanner, who's a favorite for, of ours for clarity and conciseness and a broad range of examples always with her eye on inclusion, where she talks about student metacognition in biology classrooms, and I steal from it all the time in teaching in literature classrooms. One of the reasons I steal from it is she addresses how teachers think about metacognition and how we can plan our lectures with awareness of our own ideas about learning and how it happens. And finally, there's a really great new article that I read quickly on the weekend and then reread because I liked it so much about homework as metacognitive tool in undergraduate physics courses. And this research builds on work by Eric Mazur and others who've done work around um, interactive classrooms, that idea of having some structures that um, Sarah Eddy and Becky Hogan pursue in the article I referenced about having um, some structures added to your class. So if you're looking for a way to think about doing homework differently and doing your in-class work differently, and as in differently, bringing in more learners and being more transparent, as some people call it, unhiding the hidden curriculum so students understand what they're doing, why they're doing it, and how this relates to the kind of learning they need to do.